If you want to sell personalized products or have more than 100 products variants, you need to use custom fields. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add custom fields to your Shopify product page for all the free Shopify themes. I'll give you the code for most of the types of fields you may need. Short or long text, checkbox, drop down, radio buttons, date picker, and file picker. You'll just have to copy the code snippet from a code generator that I built and paste it into your theme. Once a user enters some data into the custom field, the value of the field will be shown on the cart page, checkout page, and on the order details page in your admin panel. As a bonus, I'll also show you how to have the value of the fields present on the confirmation email and on the pack-in slip. And before we get started, if you are a merchant that is looking to hire a developer to implement this feature on your premium theme, or want to implement some custom logic to the field, you can reach out to me using my contact form. You can find the link in the description below. Let's get started. Since you most likely don't want to show the custom fields for all the products of your store, the first step is to create a new product page template for the products we want to show the field for. So from your admin panel, click on online store, scroll to your current theme and click on customize. Click on this home page drop down, click on products, create template. And you can name the template whatever you want. I'm going to name mine custom. And click on create template. So now let's assign our new template page to our product. So to do that, click on exit, click on products, and select the product you want to show the field for. For me, it's the custom mug. Then scroll down. And here where you can see theme template, click on default products and select custom instead. If you can't see the template page that you've created here, make sure that you created it on the live theme and not on a draft theme. Then you can save. If you have multiple products you want to assign the template to, you can use the bulk editor to assign the template to them all at once. To do that, go back to your product list and select the products you want to assign the template to and click on bulk edit, click on columns, and you can add the template column. And now if you have like even a hundred products, you just need to drag the custom value here and you can assign it to them. After you have assigned the product template page to your products, head over to the code generator for custom fields. You can find the link in the description. So let's see how this code generator works. On the left, you have the settings of the field. First, we have the type. So you can select the type here. And on the right, you have a preview of what the field looks like. Of course, the exact appearance of the field will depend on which theme you are using. And also on the style settings of your theme. So I'm going with a short text. And for the label, I'm going to call mine your text. Next is the characters limit option since we have a limited space for custom engravings, for example. So let's say we have a character limit of 10. And let's test this. So as I type, we can see this counter here that shows to the user the limit. And let's keep typing. And now I reach the limit and I can't type anymore. And lastly, we have this checkbox, make the field required. So if we check this, it means that we can't add the product to the cart if this field is empty. So once you're done setting up the field, you can scroll down and click on this button to copy the code. And this code here adapts to the settings that you have entered. So let's go back to our Shopify store and see where we're going to use this code. From your themes list, click on customize on the theme you want to add the field to. Click on the homepage dropdown products and click on the product page template that you previously created. Okay, now on the left, scroll down and we need to add a new block for the product information section. If you can't see the block, simply click on this icon and you'll be able to see them. So click on add block and select custom liquid. Then scroll down since your block will be added here and click on custom liquid to see the settings and paste the code that you've got from the generator. Let's scroll down again, and now we can see our field. So let's click here to go back, 
and let's drag our field just under the variance picker or where you need this exactly. Then let's save and let's preview the store to test our field. So to do that, click on this button and click on view. Then you can search for your custom product. For me, it's custom mug. I'll click on it to access the product page. So let's test this field. And since I had the, the option for to make this required, I shouldn't be able to add the product to the cart if the field is empty. Let's try this. I click on add to cart and I have this required message. So this is great. Let's also test the characters limit feature. So if I type something on the field and as you can see, the counter number is still changing and our 10 character limit is still here since I can't type more characters. And let's add the product to the cart. We have the message so showing here on this pop up. And uh, if I click view the cart, we have your text John Smith still showing on the cart page. And if I click checkout, the message is still showing on the checkout page. OK, so now I ordered the product. I'll go back to the Shopify admin panel and click on orders and click on the latest order. And here is our message and uh, everything's working properly. As you can see your text, John Smith. Now let's talk about the confirmation email that the customer receives after he makes the purchase. This is the email of the last order with the custom field. You'll notice it doesn't contain the value that we entered with the text field. It could be better if the value was present here, like for example, under the product title. Uh, the customer could double check if he made a mistake or just to create a consistent experience. I'll show you how to make that value appear on the email. Now let's go back to the Shopify store and click on settings on bottom left. Scroll down to notifications and click on order confirmation and click on edit code. So now let's edit the code of the email. Let's scroll down and get to the line 251. Okay, and we have an if statement here that we want to delete. Delete this line and also the closing tag of the if statement, 270. Okay, then we save. And now let's try to send another email to see if we have the value of the field now. And as you can see now, we have the value of our custom field present on the email. So now moving to the packing slip, let's go back to our last order again. And if we click more actions, print packing slips, we'll notice that the value of our custom field isn't showing here as well. So it would be great if we could have it here. And let me show you how we can achieve that. All right, so from your admin panel, click on the search bar and type packing slip. Okay, click on packing slip template. And we're going to edit this code to show our uh, custom message. So to do that, we're going to scroll to line 131. Just after this end if. OK. And I prepared the code for you, so I'll just need to copy paste. So I'm just going to click copy. Uh, you can find the link on the description. Go back and paste it here. Then I'm going to save. So let's test this. I'm going to click on more option. Range packing slips. And now we can see the value of our custom field under the product title. All right, this part of the video is for those who want to understand how the code that you get from the generator works exactly. So I can't go over all the types of fields, but let's say we want to add the custom text field again. Also this time, instead of just adding a new liquid block and writing my code there, I'm going to edit directly the theme files. To do that, I'm going to open the theme files on my local environment on VS Code. As you can see, I have the done theme with its theme files here. And now that it's exactly the same thing as clicking on this button next to customize and clicking edit code to open the Shopify code editor. So I'll be just using a local environment with the Shopify CLI. All right, so let's create a new block for our product information section. So if you want to see the section, you can just click on this inspector here, click on the section and here is our product information section. So we just need a class, for example, 
let's open this product page here and let's right click on the product title for example and let's copy a class for example this product title let's select it copy it let's go back to vs code and let's search for this class let's paste it here okay so we have this class present on the quick add css another css file and the featured product and the main product so it's the main product that we are interested in okay let's close this so here is the product title class and this is the content for the product title block and the block is rendered using this for loop that loops over all the blocks of the section and renders each block based on its type so let's follow the same format to create our block so i'm just going to add a new when statement i'm just going to type when here and i have this autocomplete feature on vs code that's why it's interesting to use a local environment and here in the condition i can name my block for example custom underscored field and have a test here right test just so that we can test if the block is showing properly i'm going to copy this name here and let's edit the schema tag so to do that let's press ctrl f and search for schema so this schema is for seo what we are interested in is the schema for the section settings let's add a new block here so to do that let's open brackets comma after it and we need two values we need the type and we need the name so i'm following the json format here so the type is going to be the exact same name we we wrote for our when statement and for the name it could be custom text field this is the name that is going to be shown on the shopify editor all right now let's go back to the shopify editor and make sure you're editing the custom products template page you can see here you can just click here and you'll be able to access the template page okay so let's go back to our product information section click on add block and here's the new block that we created custom text field let's click on it and we scroll down we have our test text here so let's just drag it above the quantity field okay and save so now we are done with the shopify editor we can access the product page directly so i already opened it here and let's go back to our vs code and let's go to our when statement so let's select this custom field here press ctrl f and search for it so it's just faster to get here you, you can also scroll so instead of this test we're going to type the code for our custom field so we're gonna need two html elements a label and an input okay the label could be custom text for example and the input needs a type attribute of text since we want to add a text field so let's save and go back to our product page and here's our custom text showing but the thing is even if we, if we write something and we click on add to, add to cart the value won't show yet because it's not connected properly to the form and it doesn't have a name so let's start with the name so to add a name we can use something called properties line item properties so this is the official shopify documentation and here is how we can add a name for our custom field so it's name and then properties and the name of the property will be under brackets and we're going to follow this format so let's go back to vs code and type name properties and let's call our field custom text okay so that's the first step is giving a name property and the second is connecting it to the form here on the documentation we generally add the label and input field on the form 
in inside the form tag but here we don't have we're not inside the form tag so to check that we can go back to the product page and right click inspect and let's press ctrl f and search for the form tag so open in bracket and this is the search form we're looking for the add to cart form this is the cart notification okay this is not the one so this is the form we're looking for with data type add to cart form and we need to connect our field to this form and let's see for example how this quantity field is connected to to the form so to do that right click inspect and we have a form attribute here for the input field so let's find this form attribute for this input and do the same thing for our custom field so to find this input field we just need to copy the quantity input class go back to vs code and again control f and paste it and search for it and here is the form attribute so it has a liquid variable form product form id so let's copy it and go back to our custom field again just type custom and search for it custom field all right and let's add this form attribute here okay let's save and now let's go back to our product page and see how if our field works now okay let's close the inspector tool let's write a test here add to cart and here is our custom text with the value test showing so the last thing we need to do is to style the custom field so that it looks good and consistent with the rest of the ui of the website so to do that we can for example take a look at the contact uh, form and take a look at the input field so we can just right click and click inspect and here we have a field class with an input with the field input class so we can just reuse these two classes and for the label since here the label is merged with the input we just need it separated so we can just go back to the product page and inspect a label for example the quantity label so it has the quantity label class which is specific to this input here and we have a form label so what we are interested in is the form label so let's go back to vs code and reuse these classes we can also write our own css but i think it's better to reuse the classes that are present already in the theme all right let's add those classes now we go back to vs code and add the class form underscore underscore label and let's add another div Add the input inside of the div and let's give the div a class of field and the input will get class field underscore underscore input all right so let's take a look at our field now so here's what it looks like now it looks more consistent with the rest of the ui and the last thing you may want to do is to make this field required so generally in html we just type this required attribute but it won't work since if we inspect this form here this add to cart form so here's the form tag and it has an attribute of no validate which stops the form validation that checks if a fielder if is required or not so let's just copy this no validate and let's search for it to access it, to edit the form okay and the file we're interested in is the buy button since the others are not really related to a product page and let's click on it and here we just need to remove this no validate line okay let's save save our our main liquid file and now let's add the product to the cart with an empty field and if i click add to cart we're gonna have this required message all right i hope you found some value in this tutorial i would love to hear your feedback so feel free to leave a message if Shopify made an update to the themes and the code generator is not working anymore or doesn't look how it's supposed to, please let me know in the comments as well and I'll update the code generator. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you on the next one.